Hey guys and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. I'm Zelda Master and in this episode we're going to be taking on level 2, Bottle Grotto. So this is the second temple within the game and it is pretty difficult at least compared to the first one but overall it should be easy as long as we don't get hit too much because that's a pretty big issue within the beginning of the game you tend to lose HP really quickly. Uh, because how little you do have and how much enemies do early on within the game But yeah by lighting these two torches with our magic powder We were able to open up the way to the first area and yeah I find this uh, place really cool because it's filled with bottles and it is called the bottle grotto and <laughs> It actually serves a pretty big purpose, kind of like these bottles over here, but sadly Link is too weak to pick them up. I mean, when you think about it, yeah, they are huge bottles, so it makes sense, because look, it's as big as him. And no, it's not just because the sprites, you know, this game has sprites and stuff, and enemies or bottles are small. They're actually pretty big, uh, and you're going to see in a side-to-side -side comparison later on. But in this room, we just need to kill the two keys, or the bats that were in here, so we can open up the way to I believe the compass I want to say or no actually this is more important than the compass it is a stone beak so if you're playing the original this should be a stone slab or something like that and uh, what this does of course is allow us to um, talk to the owl statues and get info from them so now that we are back in this room I'm gonna go ahead and light things up again so I can progress but every time you get a small key you want to unlock the first door you see so you don't have to backtrack a lot so here's another locked door I'm gonna remember if I get a small key to head back here so yeah also there are these switches uh, it's kind of similar to the, the way they worked in a link to the past uh, I don't know for some reason link to the past I believe is has a lot of these within the game as well but it was from blue to red and since this game was originally on a colorless game or the original game was colorless it's from blue to blue some switches like if I do this okay oops I did not mean to do that but if I do this I'll be locked by these blue switches so you kind of have to know the pattern for them or how it's gonna work but anyways I got a small key so like I said I was gonna do I was gonna head back here and I actually need to go ahead and activate this switch so I can continue on. But yeah, we're going to backtrack and open up this door where we're going to fight a Shy Guy. Yeah, they look exactly like Shy Guys, but I believe they're called, like the Zelda term for them, is the Mask Mimic. And yeah, this guy is not fun because you have to have him mimic your moves and then you have to somehow hit him on the back because you can't hit him on the mask, of course. So to kill this shy guy is just to do a spin attack when he's back to back towards you. And that will do it. That will give us the compass, so not bad. We already have the compass for this area and the beak, so we're going to get a bunch of info and stuff. And I don't really care what the text has to say. Uh, it's kind of annoying how we can't really skip through that and it goes really freaking slow. Watch this game have a, like, faster text feature that I'm not aware of, but... Yeah, or like to speed up the text and stuff. But part of the floor is raised. Tap the blue crystal. That's the tip we get here. Not bad. <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead and now progress through the temple. And I'm going to need my feather here. So I can continue on. But we can pick up this, which I believe was... What was that? I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was an item we just obtained. Maybe it's not that important. It's whatever. I got an item that is in the sky, and I'm going to go ahead and open up this for another small key. Sweet. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit this. Actually, no. I want to hit it like this so I can progress forward and head up here. We're going to find two more uh, mask mimics. I'm just going to kill them like that, and it will give us another small key. So now we're going to have two small keys on us. Uh, right off the bat, which is going to be pretty helpful because we don't have to worry about getting more keys when we find locked doors. But yeah, this is actually kind of annoying because I don't know the difference between the colors because um, they're only blue. So it's having switches like this or puzzles that revolve around switches like this is kind of dumb. Maybe if they had like circle circles and then the other ones were like square like this, like shape wise, they change. That'd be cool, but I don't know. Anywho, let's just go ahead and progress forward in this room. I believe we don't have to kill these guys, but I'm going to kill them just to be safe. I don't think a key's going to fall down. We can easily use one of the two keys we have to advance forward. Yep, okay. Completely useless, but I decided to do it because I'm cool. 
Anywho, in this room, go ahead and speak to this owl statue, make every block design the same, a new path will open. So you want to cover these two because, yeah, these two are kind of ruining the nice look this room has, the atmosphere that's given in this room, which is like a sandy type of texture. So there we go, now we can't see the blue platform, and the way has opened up. Hopefully we'll be able to keep this downstairs. Will it play? Yeah, it does. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and progress through here and take out the cape. You have to constantly pause because what's kind of lame is you can only hold up to two items and one of them has to be your sword, of course. You can't, like, unequip your sword because then you'll have no weapon, so yeah. Anyway, I'm pretty sure all you need to do is kill this guy. No, you don't even need to do anything. What am I saying? This, this door, you just do this. It's a one-way type of door, but here is the mini-boss. So yeah, this mini-boss, I believe he's known as... Hinox and he does a good amount of damage if you let him hit you so don't let him hit you, you what you want to do is you want to trap him in a corner if I'm able to do that then I'm good there we go and just spam the button until he's dead um, because he'll throw bombs at you or he'll chuck you like as he did there and uh, that is not pretty but what he did is he left a portal that will take us back to the beginning of the temple which I'm gonna need to use sooner or later ignore this owl statue for now and just keep heading up we're actually fairly close to finishing up this temple when you think about it. I just realized how short this temple actually is when you know what you're doing. But what I want to do is I want to open up this. There we go. We got the dungeon map at last. You got the map. You can press start and look at things. All right, cool. Yep. Okay. Falling wasn't a bad idea because it was kind of like a shortcut. But yeah, I believe this thing at the end of the room is what's sucking us in. I don't think it's like sand sinking or something, but... You want to be careful because that is not cool. <laughs> Let's go ahead and kill off these enemies, pick up this rupee, and I believe I do have one more key on me. So we're going to use it in this door where we're going to fight two boos. I don't know if they actually have a... I don't really know the name for them. I'm just going to call them boos. But yeah, light this. They're going to get afraid of you, and you'll be able to kill them easily. By doing that, we can get ourselves the item of the temple, which is the power bracelet. So finally, we're able to pick up stones and freaking pots and stuff like that. So this is going to make things a lot easier. This music is actually getting a little annoying now. Kind of want it to wear off. Hopefully it will soon. But yeah, <laughs> let's go ahead and hit this, walk around, pick up another small key. And, uh, hmm... Yeah, I think we're, we're we're doing pretty well with uh, the item we just got, which is the... Okay, hopefully I can just avoid this guy. I'm just going to have to get hit by him. Or I can walk like that. That was good. All right. But yeah, with the uh, power brace that we just obtained, we're going to change the way things work within this temple. Not really, but we're going to be... We're going to backtrack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and head back... I'm going to head inside this room. Ignore these enemies for now. Okay, seriously, this music needs to end sooner or later. <laughs> It's lasting for way too long. Also, yeah, there are Goombas and Piranha Plants. This level is literally like ripped out of Mario, it seems, which is freaking awesome. Uh, but yeah, in this room, you, it will, it's just like a side view of everything, and it takes you back to this room. And uh, remember how I said we're gonna not speak to the owl? Okay, this music is seriously. Thank God it ended. I was seriously going insane. <laughs> I could not focus because how annoying and obnoxious that music was. But okay, now I feel like I've got my composure. I can focus on what I want to say. But you know how I said we were going to avoid that owl statue and we're going to come back to it? Well, we're going to come back to it now once we head back to the beginning of the temple by heading inside this and then grabbing this chest. This chest isn't that important, but I want to get it as soon as possible because 50 rupees and why the heck not? I mean, it's a lot of rupees. So now... Let's go ahead and head back to the middle of the temple and speak to this owl statue, which, once again, we have to constantly pause and switch our items, but first defeat the imprisoned Pole's voice, last Stalfos. Alright, so he gave us an order of how we're supposed to defeat certain enemies, and those enemies are past this 2D section within the game, and uh, not really 2D, but I guess side scroll section, because the whole game is 2D, so yeah, but you guys get what I mean. Just go ahead and kill this piranha plant. If you bounce on the Goomba, they're going to give you a piece of heart. I guess that's a nice Mario reference. Oh, sweet. I was able to kill him in midair, but 
Yeah, so this is the room that we have to do what the statue said. So I'm going to hit this guy once because the Stalfos can actually take up to two hit, two hits. And these are Pull's voice. Uh, I believe in the original Legend of Zelda, if you had a... Uh, on the Super Famicom, which was the Japanese uh, Super Nintendo, you could actually... Or maybe it was a certain controller... I'm not too sure, but either way, you could like blow into like a microphone or like a remote that had a microphone and it would actually uh, paralyze them because they can't get hurt by any normal weapon. You have to hurt them with objects or arrows or anything like that. So yeah, they're pretty hard to kill. That's why I had to kill that one with a bottle because I don't have any other type of projectile that will kill them. But there we go. We got the nightmares key and we can open up the way to the boss. So now we have everything. If I go ahead and press start, we can see the compass, the map. And uh, the beak, see, the whole row is complete. And there's one small key with us, which we're going to be using in a second. But yeah, pretty swag. <laughs> Just to see everything complete. But there we go. Now it's time to make our way to the boss. Here are more Pole's voice. These guys are really cool because, like I was saying, uh, for the original Legend of Zelda, you had, well, you didn't have to, but a way of killing them was by making noise. And uh, that's, I guess, kind of their weakness. I guess they're really sensitive to, like, noise and stuff. So, yeah. And they don't really get hurt by anything else. But here is a nice side-by-side -side comparison of how big these pots actually are compared to Link. Yeah, they're huge. And you need one of the pots to weigh you down because uh, if you don't have it, you'll, you won't be able to get this platform down so you can progress. But there we go. Now, we are at the boss. So, yeah, this boss is kind of may be difficult because he does a lot of damage but other than that if you're able to avoid his attacks you'll be fine so ho 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 i'm your bad guy this time ho, ho, ho. yeah all right before we do anything let me just take out my power bracelet because we need it for this battle so here we go do something there we go he's gonna pop up in front of us so nah, nah, you can't hurt me as long as i have my bottle and you can't He's pretty much invincible in that bottle. So, what we're going to do is he's, we have to avoid his fireballs that he tries to throw at you. This guy is a genie. And then, once he's in his bottle, I can't move, but I'm still all right. Your sword won't break this bottle. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and smash it against the wall. Will that break it? Yeah. Uh, when he gets back into his bottle, he's going to try to hop on you. You hit it with your sword. That paralyzes him. And then, you just rinse and repeat. Once you do we get to hit him against the wall with your power brace and you need the power bracelet to pick it up You pretty much use the item to uh, pick up heavy things, but there we go once again Let's go ahead and knock him like that chuck it and we have to do it again and I don't know why he rinses through the exact same dialogue again. You can't hurt me as long as I have my bottle cool You didn't say that like a billion times already But yeah with the fireballs you got to avoid them and I highly suggest not running around in a circle because he kind of predicts your movements at times. Especially the next phase of this battle. This is where it gets really difficult. So here we go. We broke his bottle. Why you broke my bottle? Why you, you, you make me hopping mad. No idea what that means, but all right. So now what he does is he kind of glitches all over the screen and then chucks a random fireball at you. Uh, you hit him once. He does it again. So you want to make sure you predict where he's going to shoot the fireball and avoid it. Just like that. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're just running around in circles after we hit him once. Hoping that we're fine. There we go. And he, yeah, he takes a bunch of hits in this phase. It's ridiculous. But we were able to do it. I don't even think we got hit. So actually, he wasn't that hard at all. As long as you know how to avoid his attacks. But that's obvious. Anywho, we have done it. We took on the boss. We got the heart container. Everything has been completed. Bottle Grotto is done. Let's go ahead and pick up the instrument. You've got the conch horn! You can actually hear a difference in this one, but it sounds amazing either way. All of them do. All the instruments. But there we go, so... Prairie, prairie. The prairie is waiting. All right, well, guys, that does it for this episode of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And we're going to end off this episode with some really obnoxious music. Yeah, I can't believe I'm already tired of this. I used to like it, but it's the same thing on a constant loop for several minutes. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> but we got freaking Bow Wow with us once again. You know, he was waiting outside of the temple. And in the next episode, I guess we're going to take him back home and see what else awaits. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs>